had, you know, the city party, I was very fortunate. In fact, he came to, to uh, uh, no, I talked to him before that, but it, I think it was when we came to Soldier's Play. And he said, you're good. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, and, and wow. I, I got a part in a movie in 1986. I called it the nigga they couldn't kill. Oh. Yeah, it was, he was supposed to be, uh, he raped a white woman and they, they, they tried to electrocute him, but it didn't work. <laughs> And he became sort of a, what was a your cult team? hero. No, not that one. That was the other awful one. But and then they tried to hang him, and they tried to do all this stuff. And I had a lot of training day in me. And there, was some, there were some uh, Jewish people in the in the in the audition, and, and I said, yeah. They said, no, it's funny. It's like they hang him, and then they can't. I said, yeah. Like you bring some Jewish people into a room, and you and you they think it's a shower, but it's gas. Oh. And they said, right. I said, right, that ain't funny. Mm. So to me, it wasn't funny about putting a rope around my MF and neck <laughs> either. I made a point. The guy was like, who, who the hell is this little nigga talking, talking like this? So anyway, make a long story long. I, I called Sydney and I was sick because he told me to call him. If I, you know, I call, I was sad. I said, man, they offered me $600,000 to play the nigga you, you, they couldn't kill. <laughs> and he said, I'm not going to tell you what to do. He said, I'm not going to tell you that, Denzel. He says, but I can tell you this. The first two or three or four films you do in this business will dictate how you're perceived in yes. this business. Mm -hmm. So you make a decision. You know, he didn't tell me what to do, and I'll give him credit for that. And I turned it down, and six months later, I got Cry Freedom uh. and got an Oscar nomination. So it could have gone an entirely, you know, you never know. Mm -hmm.